Jenny Mack with your daily comedy news. Stephen Colbert says reports say that Ivanka and Jared Kushner have distanced themselves from former President Trump and his constant complaints. Colbert says Trump's complaint is, why does he get to date my daughter? Doesn't seem fair. We're both family. Funny and creepy. Jimmy Kimmel said Trump has become so distant from Ivanka that he started to call her Eric. Fallon with a similar joke. When Trump heard that one of his kids wanted distance, Trump was like, please be Eric, please be Eric, Colbert. Apparently, the feeling is somewhat mutual because insiders say there's jealousy from the former president about Kushner's seven-figure book deal. Early reports of that Jared's book is going to be a lot like Jared, glossy and no spine. Remember that story from last week where Trump was upset about the late night host making fun of him? Seth Meyers weighed in and has an offer for Trump saying, if you play Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman, We will not make fun of you on late night for the rest of the year, but you have to be off book. If you forget your lines and more likely don't read the script in the first place, you just have to make something up. You just have to make up a plot of whatever you think Death of a Salesman is about. And if you're wondering what the catch is, there isn't one. This is just something I personally would really enjoy seeing. And if you don't do this, then I'm sorry. It's Eclipse City in the graphics department and then showed that photo from 2017 of Trump staring into the full solar eclipse. Did you see Mike Pence was heckled at the Conservative Faith and Freedom Coalition conference? Say that five times fast. Seth Meyer said that's like getting booed throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game in your home state. Oh, that also happened to Mike Pence. And he showed a clip from April 2016 when then Governor Mike Pence was booed. Seth said, booing is one thing, but they're calling Pence a traitor, and he keeps trying to give his speech and act like it's not happening. If Pence should be popular anywhere, it's there, and yet he's getting booed. That's like the Kardashians getting booed on E. From People Magazine, your home for comedy news, John Mulaney and Olivia Munn are going strong. The star couple enjoyed a low-key, laugh-filled lunch date on Saturday afternoon at Rick's Drive-In and Out in L.A. They were kicking back at an outdoor table under sunny skies. An insider tells people they were having a great time during lunch, laughing and talking. They were really enjoying each other's company. A source close to people says that this is very new. They're taking it slowly. Sticking with the gossip, Radar Online says Dave Chappelle was seen partying. Dave did a show at the Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut. And then he was seen, quote, living it up at Shrine Nightclub located inside the resort casino where he partied with Donnell Rawlings, DJ Trauma, and Sypha Sounds from midnight to close. I don't know how gossipy that is. Dave Chappelle plays a casino, show ends, and he hangs out at the club in the casino. Radar Online sources say that Dave spent the last 20 minutes of his evening behind the DJ booth, hyping up the crowd. The second to last song of the night was Dr. Dre's The Next Episode, featuring Snoop Dogg, Corrupt, and Nate Dogg, which DJ Dave Chappelle dedicated to, quote, all the ladies. Chappelle bobbed his head and waved his hands as lights flashed and the crowd went wild. Sources say Dave closed out the party by playing Radiohead's Creep and he shouted to the mob of clubbers, if you know the words, sing it with me. I don't know why this article is written like this is scandalous. Again, the guy did a comedy show, then he hung out with some friends and he played some songs and asked people to, you know, wave their hands in the air like they just don't care. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Ricky Gervais revealed why he refuses to perform at parties or corporate events despite being offered millions of dollars to do so. He says he's been offered huge sums to perform a stand-up routine at weddings, parties, and he always turns them down because he knows he wouldn't enjoy it, saying, if you can't be bought, you're the richest person in the world. I turn them all down, not because I think it's beneath me, because I wouldn't enjoy it. I even feel guilty because I think that's a day's work and I could give the five million pounds to charity. When I first started out, I did one. The office had been out for a week and I got this big paid corporate event. I remember thinking, I got to take this because the pay was the same that my dad made in a year. And I did 15 minutes, but I hated every minute of it. Some drunk marketing managers, I thought, I'm never going to do this again. He also said he no longer cares whether his jokes and opinions offend others. He told BBC Radio 5. Ten years ago, when somebody complained about a joke, I looked into it. I thought they might have a point here. Now I go, no, people just want to be heard. People who want to be offended will find a way to be offended. Doesn't mean they're right. He also does not fear dying. I talk about how amazing life is, and I talk about how it's finite. And I say, I feel like this is a holiday. We don't exist for 13 and a half billion years. Then we have 80, 90, 100, if you're lucky, you have to try everything and experience everything. And then we don't exist again forever. But we're alive now, and that's brilliant. So yeah, roll on, death. It's going to happen, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with being dead. The best thing about being dead is you don't know about it. That's the best thing. It's like being stupid. It's only painful for others, so it's fine. It's been like five minutes since Kevin Hart had a new gig. Don't worry. He's got another gig from We Got This Covered. Kevin Hart 
is teaming up with Mark Wahlberg for a Netflix comedy. The premise follows a stay-at-home dad who gets some time to himself when his wife and kids are out of town when he reconnects with his best friend for a wild weekend. The best friend would be played by Mark Wahlberg. The character details would put it right in the star's wheelhouse with the role of Huck, described as a party boy man-child that's lost his job and spiraled out of control. Meanwhile, Mike Epps, he's often rumored to play Richard Pryor in a biopic, Still no plans for the biopic, but Mike Epps will be playing Richard Pryor in an upcoming series for HBO about the Los Angeles Lakers. The laugh button adds that the tie-in between Richard Pryor and the Lakers remains unclear, but it has them excited to see what comes of it. Now, this Lakers thing I'm talking about here with Richard Pryor in it, completely different from the Mindy Kaling Lakers thing I told you about last week. Lakers are in the news. HBO's also picked up Nathan For You's Nathan Fielder for a new show. It is called The Rehearsal. Picked up straight to series, a half-hour comedy set in a world where nothing seems to ever work out as you had hoped and features Fielder giving people the opportunity to rehearse for their own lives. It is unclear if the rehearsal will be scripted or a docuseries. HBO declined comment. All right, this week on Instagram at Daily Comedy News, it is Daily Comedy News Food Fight. You're going to tell me which would you rather have, George Lopez Tacos or Jim Gaffigan Pulled Pork Sandwich. Go to Instagram at Daily Comedy News. Let me know your votes. Some things I've been watching on the TV. I went to Peacock. Yeah, the app nobody watches. I got a story here. And I watched episode one of We Are Lady Parts. And I was quite entertained. And then I wanted to see more of it. So We Are Lady Parts gets a thumbs up from Johnny Mac. And then I went to click on episode two. And Peacock was like, yeah, man. Um, so you're going to give us the five bucks for Peacock with commercials or the 10 bucks for Peacock with no commercials? And I said, I'm not giving you any money, Peacock. And I went on with my life. We Are Lady Parts is good, but not give Peacock money good. If it shows up somewhere else, I will totally watch it. I was totally in, but I got enough streaming services, Peacock. Sorry. Then I went over to Hulu and I caught up with season two of Dave, which is a very funny, very naughty sitcom. How do you even describe Dave? I'm going to have to crib here. Let's see. Dave synopsis. Premise. The series stars a fictionalized version of Lil Dicky, a suburban neurotic man in his late 20s who has convinced himself that he's destined to be one of the best rappers of all time. Yeah, that'll do it. Fun show. Season one was hilarious. Season two so far hasn't quite kicked into the gear as season one did, but totally watch it. The uh, season finale of season one is mind blowing. All right. Yesterday, I promised I would tell the serious story. Now, what makes this top of mind to me is I watched Luca. That's the animated Pixar thing you'll find on Disney Plus. And during Luca, the quote Italian characters were doing that quote Italian accent where you add vowels to everything like, hey, what's the matter? You hey, you want us some pizza? That kind of accent. And I wondered, are you still allowed to do that? Now, recently, a co-worker of mine, his name is Sal DeLeo. He did all the production on the Sirius Raw Dog channel when I used to run that a decade ago. And he sent me a promo from 2006 we had done. Now, before I tell the story, there are now 700 plus episodes of Daily Comedy News. You can listen to all of them. And I think if you listen to them all, you'll see that I come in peace. I'm not out to be a jerky face. So Sal shared this thing with me. The promo, we were trying to do something funny around Election Day. And what we did, apparently, and I've totally blocked this out, is we did Erection Day, where we played dick jokes. It's a comedy station hosted by the devil, uncensored comedy. So we did dick jokes for Erection Day. Pretty harmless. Now, on the promo, we had... I don't even know how to describe this. So this is the whole point, that it's 2021, and I'm like, we would never do this now. But in 2005 or six. Everybody was like, yeah, sure. So in the promo, we have what I will describe as, um, you know, in a movie where you'll see the old Chinese wise man character who has wisdom, that character. So we had that character explaining that we were doing Erection Day. Now, part of the joke was the Chinese stereotype where the R's and L's are switched in words, but it actually was erection jokes. So he wasn't doing that it wasn't a misspeak of election we were actually doing erection day and the character goes erection day haha ha, very funny and we've got behind this you know this uh i'll describe it as mystical quote-unquote chinese atmosphere it's a really good sounding promo my point is i'm not sure we could do that today
I don't recall anyone complaining, and I know we didn't set out to be hateful, but times have changed. So I may have just canceled myself, but that is something we did back in 2005, 2006, Erection Day on Sirius. Like I said, no one complained. No one ever complained about the devil either. No, that's not true. We got one complaint about the devil one time, and my boss flagged it for me, and I did some quick math, and I'm like, we have been running the devil ID. It was at the top of the hour. It would just say, with the devil voice, serious raw dog, 104, and then we had a clip from Kids in the Hall where one of the kids said, thank you, Satan, and we got one letter one time that we were thanking Satan on an uncensored comedy channel on satellite radio. And my boss asked me if we should change it. And I did some math and I'm like, okay, this has been running for nine years, 24 times seven. We've got 25 million subscribers. And I'm like, we have done, and it was some crazy number, like 1.9 trillion impressions of somebody saying, thank you, Satan. And we've gotten one letter in nine years. No, I'm not changing it. That is your comedy news for today. You can follow this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow. Right, my dick is so big it still has snow on it in summertime. Ha 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 ha.